Hi, my name is David Geddes and I will be your host today as we celebrate the launch of the Financial Services Commission's Risk-Based Supervision Framework. The FSC was established in 2001 to regulate and supervise the non-deposit-taking financial sector, which consists of the securities, insurance and the private pension industries in order to protect the users of these financial services. So wait a second, Regin, you remember man, quick and fast investment. Quick and fast, how about that? What do you mean? Fling a grand, get 50 grand. You put one grand and get 50 grand. What do you mean? That don't sound right. The magic not the same thing FSC I want people about, them fake investment business there. How are you asking to me, Jenna? How are you FSC? You know it's a good thing you asked that question. In 2001, the Jamaican economy was emerging from financial turmoil. The Jamaican government established the Financial Services Commission to regulate the services of companies in the insurance sector, the private pension sector and the security sector. The Financial Services Commission, or FSC, is a body set up to protect the interest of consumers who purchase securities, what you know as investments, insurance, and private pensions. The FSC has the power to enforce the laws that protect these consumers by applying sanctions or recommending prosecution for those who breach the FSC Act and other legislation. Thanks to that FSC talented team, Davian, David and Joan, we must do our checks before making an investment. We now welcome Mr. Everton McFarlane, the Executive Director of the FSC, who tells us what the RBS framework means to the FSC and to Jamaica. Mr. McFarlane has more than 20 years experience developing and leading successful economic and regulatory policy initiatives in the public sector. He has served as technical advisor on national economic policies and has played key roles in driving the development of comprehensive frameworks on tax policy reform and financial services regulation. Greetings colleagues and stakeholders. Today, the Financial Services Commission is officially launching its risk-based supervisory framework which sets out our approach for the supervision and risk assessment of Jamaica's non-deposit taking financial institution, the NDTFI sector. This sector comprises entities in the insurance, securities, and private pensions industries. The rollout of an RBS framework is not an event. It is a journey. In 2018, we embarked on this journey in partnership with the Toronto Centre and several key local partners and licensees to adopt and implement this RBS framework. Through sound technical advice based on its vast experience, the Toronto Centre guided the FSC to successfully pilot and perfect this RBS methodology locally. As a result of implementing an RBS supervisory framework, there have been several significant changes in our modus operandi. For example, our supervisory methodology can no longer be purely compliance-based. In fact, the RBS methodology forces us to, among other things, structure our examinations of supervised entities to reveal whether or not there is effective risk management, to identify areas of greatest risks, and to assess whether or not those risks are effectively mitigated. The RBS framework requires us to remain steadfast in moving towards a practice of continuously assessing the, in the inherent risks associated with a company's mode of business, to assess the company's corporate governance, risk management and control functions in order to determine the overall risk of the entity and to anticipate any possible future breaches. The RBS methodology will foster a superior level of collaboration within the FSC at an organizational level and will reduce a tendency to work in silos. Finally, the RBS framework requires a cultural shift in how we conduct ourselves as regulators. As always, we will continue to press ahead in our mission 
to protect users of financial services across Jamaica's insurance, securities, and private pensions sectors. Thank you, Mr. McFarlane. That was insightful. This next video tells us how RBS protects the financial industry. In these times, we're constantly reminded not to take things for granted. Your finances should not be left to chance. Let's explore how the FSC's new supervisory model will help to secure the financial system we all need and rely on. The FSC's latest initiative, called Risk-Based Supervision, or RBS, looks at the ways in which financial services providers, like your insurance company, deal with risk. Risk is simply the exposure to loss or injury. As we entrust financial institutions to help us grow and protect our assets and life savings, the FSE is here to ensure that they have proper risk management practices in place. Risk-based supervision will be used to examine the manner in which insurers, securities dealers, and pension plans identify and control risks to you and the financial system. RBS is about being efficient and spotting trends and changes ahead of time. With this new framework, consumers can expect to see more focused and proactive monitoring by the FSC, which helps us to spot incoming risks and to intervene in a timely fashion. More cost-effective use of resources in monitoring companies with multiple subsidiaries across different sectors and better managed companies which will ultimately deliver better results for you, the client. Thanks, Tony Ann. Now, it seems to me that RBS will help us to better manage risks experienced by financial institutions and also in our own financial assets. The Toronto Centre was a consultancy firm that assisted with the implementation of risk-based supervision. For over two decades, the Toronto Centre has been delivering capacity-building programs in the areas of banking, insurance, securities, pensions, microfinance, microinsurance, and risk-based supervision. A team of three consultants guided the FSC's implementation. We first hear from Mrs. Shalina Visram. Greetings from Toronto. I'm Shalina Visram, Program Director at Toronto Centre for Global Leadership in Financial Supervision. Since our inception in 1998, Toronto Center has trained more than 16,000 central bankers and supervisors from 190 countries to build more stable, resilient, and inclusive financial systems. Our mission is supported by our key funders, Global Affairs Canada, Swedish CEDA, IMF, Jersey Overseas Aid, and the United Nations Capital Development Fund. In July 2018, at the request of the Financial Services Commission of Jamaica, we engaged in a three-year project with the FSC to assist it with transitioning from a compliance-based supervisory system to one that is both risk-based and consistent with international standards. Thank you, Mrs. Visram. RBS has been welcomed by regulated entities and the President and Chief Executive Officer of Sajikor Group Jamaica, Mr. Christopher Zaka, tells us why. Sajikor Group Jamaica is proud to have been chosen in the Financial Services Commission pilot of their new risk-based examination methodology. Our life insurance arm, Sajikor Life Jamaica, our pensions arm, Employee Benefits Administrator Limited, and our investment arm, Sajikor Investments Limited, all participated in the pilot. At Sagicor, we take the business of risk management seriously, and it is a key priority for us, one in which we have structured ongoing training programs and have put policies in place to guide our risk management strategy. The FSC's review was welcomed and timely, as we are sensitive to and mindful of the ongoing changes in the regulatory space and we want to remain at the forefront of global best practices in our approach to risk management at Sagicor. The team is pleased with the FSC's management of the review and its outcome, as this process has provided us with an opportunity to further build on the robust structure of our enterprise risk management framework. The review also allowed the FSC to get a deeper understanding of the company's operations 
which will further enrich the relationship between the company and the regulator going forward. Sagicor congratulates the FSC and fully endorses its new risk-based examination approach. We encourage other companies to participate too, as the risk-based approach is forward-looking and allows financial entities to focus their resources on high-risk areas. Overall, I am confident that this new approach will strengthen the resilience of the financial sector in Jamaica. Thank you, Mr. Zaka. Mr. Berchenester is another of the consultants from the Toronto Centre. Securities regulators readily acknowledged by the banking sector in the early development of elements of the methodology, RBS. We directed significant effort at expanding consideration of risk to include qualitative factors such as those arising in the conduct of business by regulated entities, market integrity and efficiency, as well as financial stability. The reality is that in the securities and capital markets, the value chain from the sale and purchase of a security through the various steps to settlement, activities of intermediaries are more dominant upstream, whereas the activities of financial markets infrastructures become more dominant downstream. It is important to recognize the difference. All of this called for an inclusive and comprehensive consideration of distinct but related factors on the risk-based spectrum. I am happy to say that I enjoyed significant and enthusiastic participation and inquiry from colleagues at the FSC. Thank you, Mr. Chenetza. While the FSC's regulatory and supervisory functions contribute significantly to the stability and the development of Jamaica's economy, the FSC, by being a good corporate citizen, also makes a huge difference in many of our communities. Mrs. Nicolette Hennes is the Deputy Executive Director of the FSC, having assumed that role in 2017. Her professional experience in the financial sector spans several years in senior management positions in many distinguished and well-established institutions. When people hear about the Financial Services Commission, also known as the FSC, they usually think we are only a regulator. But did you know that we are also a good corporate citizen? The FSC cares about young people. We want to see them succeed. So over the years, we have invested heavily in our school's financial education program, where we teach financial skills to high school students across the island. Our efforts to empower consumers are now a part of the Government Trust to implement a national financial inclusion strategy. We teach high school students important financial skills that they will benefit from in years to come. We believe in giving back to social and charity organizations such as the Jamaica Red Cross, Jamaica Cancer Society and our local churches. So the next time you hear about FSC, don't just think of us as a regulator. We are also a friend of the community. Remember, FSC promoting integrity in the Jamaican financial sector. Mrs. Hennes also chairs the RBS Steering Committee, which played an integral role in the successful introduction of the RBS methodology. She worked along with a vibrant and productive team of FSC staff members. Mrs. Marlene Street Forrest is currently the Managing Director of the Jamaica Stock Exchange, having first been appointed General Manager in 2000. During her tenure as Managing Director, Mrs. Street Forrest has proven to be an exemplary leader and trailblazer. She has guided the Stock Exchange to becoming one of the largest in the Caribbean, and in 2019 she achieved another first when the GSE was named the world's top performing stock exchange by Bloomberg Business Week. Mrs. Street Forrest recognizes the importance and value of risk-based supervision and is a staunch advocate of its implementation. The Jamaica Stock Exchange has long promoted that the creation of wealth does not reside merely in being employed. Wealth is created through investments. The JC provides a key channel for encouraging and mobilizing domestic savings and helps to foster the growth of Jamaica's financial services sector. We are known for our value of transparency, reliability, integrity, and professionalism, and are purpose-driven in all we undertake to serve the market. 
The JC has a rich history of mobilizing capital for companies which list on the exchange, and we provide a conduit through which investors can create wealth by investing in these companies. The JSE operates using first-class and globally accepted technology and through its trading and surveillance platform provides a safe and efficient stock market. Through these efforts, the JSE has twice been recognized internationally by Bloomberg as the number one performing exchange in the world. Against this background, the Jamaica Stock Exchange welcomes the introduction of risk-based supervision. Risk-based supervision, otherwise called RBS, is gradually becoming the dominant approach to regulatory supervision of financial institutions around the world. It is a comprehensive, formally structured system that assesses risk within the financial system, giving priority to the resolution of those risks. We recognize that this relatively new framework will facilitate a strong risk management culture within publicly traded companies and member dealers organizations, thereby reducing regulatory burdens on well-managed companies. Companies that operate efficiently will reap the benefits as will those who invest through the stock exchange in such companies. It is truly a win-win situation. We have collaborated with the Financial Services Commission Steering Committee in conducting tests and assessment in the preliminary rollout of RBS. And we are confident that this regulatory framework will benefit the Jamaican economy as we strive to fulfill the various obligations of Vision 2030. Jamaica, the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and to do business. Thanks, Mrs. Street Forest. We now hear from the Toronto Centre's Mr. Carl Hiralal. Regulators protect users of financial services by assessing the safety and soundness of financial institutions and pension plans, maintaining stability of the financial system, while at the same time recognizing the need to facilitate innovation and healthy competition. The attainment of this complex objective is best achieved when supervision is forward-looking, continually evolving, outcomes and principles based, and most of all, underpinned by sound judgment. These are the basic tenets of risk-based supervision framework which the FSC has just implemented. Supervising financial institutions, therefore, is as much an art as it is a science. This change from a compliance-based to a risk-based system represents a paradigm shift in the regulation and supervision of the financial services industry. To be clear, it is not a change in process, but a change in mindset. While the FSE's risk-based supervisory methodology is consistent with international best practice, more importantly, it incorporates the nuances of the local environment. In other words, the internationally recognized principle of proportionality was embraced in the development and implementation of the FSE's risk-based supervisory framework. The FSE has now joined a growing pool of regulatory bodies globally that have implemented risk-based supervision and is not only well positioned to meet its traditional prudential responsibilities, but also an increasingly widening regulatory remit that demands greater recognition and measurable action on social goals such as climate-related financial risk, diversity, and financial inclusion. Thanks, Mr. Hiralal. It is now my honor and pleasure to introduce the Chairman of the Board of Commissioners of the FSC, Mr. John Robinson. Mr. Robinson, CDJP, was appointed Chairman of the Board of Commissioners of the Financial Services Commission in July 2021. He is a retired Senior Deputy Governor of the Bank of Jamaica. In his distinguished career in the financial sector, 
Mr. Robinson has gained vast experience in the analysis and application of monetary policy, oversight of financial markets, surveillance of financial sector stability, corporate strategy and administration. This is indeed a momentous occasion for the Financial Services Commission as we launch our risk-based supervision, or RBS. It is not only significant for us at the FSC, but it has far-reaching implications for the health of the non-deposit-taking financial institutions, as well as the stability of Jamaica's financial market and the wider economy. RBS is a forward-looking supervisory methodology which focuses on the risks faced by regulated entities and their capabilities for managing these risks. RBS also allows for more supervisory efficiency and effectiveness as supervisory resources are allocated where they are needed most based on the regulator's assessment of risk within the entity as well as within the industry. So this more flexible approach espoused by RBS spawns other advantages. It enables proactive supervision instead of only reactive supervision. And rather than slavishly following a routine supervisory process, the RBS approach involves identifying the key risk issues and then applying targeted regulatory interventions around these issues. The FSC will communicate the minimum requirement to manage their risks appropriately and it reduces the regulatory burden on well-managed institutions. So on behalf of my fellow commissioners, I would like to thank the Executive Director Everton McFarlane, the RBS Steering Committee chaired by Deputy Executive Director Nicolette Enes and the RBS working groups for their dedicated efforts and hard work to bring this framework to fruition. Thanks also to the industries we regulate for coming on board and assisting with the initial assessments. Now it is my honor to declare RBS operational. Thank you, Chairman Robinson. Today marks the culmination of a collaboration and partnership between the FSC and its stakeholders. This is a new beginning which represents a shift in the FSC's regulatory approach. This methodology, which will enhance the FSC's technical capabilities, will result in a more agile framework geared towards mitigating systemic risks to which its licensees and registrants are exposed. On behalf of the FSC's Chairman John Robinson and the Board of Commissioners, the Executive Director Mr. Everton McFarlane, the Deputy Executive Director Mrs. Nicolette Hennes, members of the RBS Steering Committee and the entire FSC family, we thank you for watching. <music>